This video has disappeared off the internet and has been recently rediscovered or re-uploaded. Whichever way you want to put it, shoddy, we are back with more reaction content. That's right, baby. We got internet historian today. And this video has been one of the most suggested here on my channel. And uh, it's been gone. So I haven't been able to check it out until today. It just got re-uploaded by him. So let's dive straight into it. It's man in the cave or hole. Well, people are saying it's called the hole. Some people are saying it's called man in the cave. I don't know. Either way, we jumping straight in. But hey, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit the subscribe button if you like the content. You will like the content, okay? We're going to become besties. Come hang out more. The channel's brand new. And on top of that, I also take suggestions in the, in the comments. So, for example, if you want me to play a new video game or if you want me to check out a video and react to it, you can comment it down below but don't post links links are cringe but i'm super open to suggestions i actually started playing elven ring and ultra kill because of the comments and i also have checked out other internet historian videos and max for videos here too so i hope you stick around anyways let's get into it <laughs> sorry for the re-upload fellas hi we got copy struck Rip. Oh, but don't worry. We are working on new main channel videos. Holy smokes! Timelines. In the meanwhile, incognito. Wait, so that's three videos because there are three different timelines. Holy shit! That's so much content. <laughs> which has a new video about every six weeks, and story mode, which has a new video about every four weeks. Thank you for watching a second. Wow. <laughs> the smooches. Mwah. <laughs> that's just screen brightness. Huh? Uh, oh. In the state of Kentucky, there is a cave. A cave? That every now and then demands a sacrifice. Oh? January oh, fuck 30th, no. 1925. Is this like a, a horror thing? Is it like about people like dying in a cave? Dude, I... I'm a baby. Like, I'm a little bitch baby. Oh, hell no. A man walks towards the cave <gasps> with a kerosene lamp in his hand. Oh, don't die in there. He hangs up his jacket and ducks into a five-foot opening. Why? The inside of the cave is small. He has to go on hands and knees. Why would you do this? You're a grown-ass man. Sharp stone and choking dust. Why? He down a chute he had cleared out months earlier. All of the daylight is gone from here. And this lantern is his only source of light. Ignoring the loose limestone rocks perched directly above him, he is now 100 feet in. And here he reaches the turnaround room. Yeah, now okay, buddy, turn the, the turn fuck around. around. Because this is the juncture where even experienced cavers say, no thanks, and turn around. Because yeah. to continue on means going through this no this no oh hell no why would you make me watch this i'm i'm scared of like oh thank god it ain't me dog <laughs> a gap in the stone of only nine inches like my cat i'm sorry Here's i'm so sorry <laughs> oh sandwich going through he would look exactly like this oh his arms will need to be completely at their side and he will need to exhale so that he can reduce the size of his torso but like gradually bit by bit he disappears into the hole i just i just don't understand why you would do this because like how the how do you get out and clearly he's gone here before because this is like, like he digged a hole to get further down and stuff so like but like what up okay I just I don't have that in me, you know. Sharp gypsum crystals, Ugh. hooking into him and threatening to hold him in place. Oh my god! Using just his feet, he pushes himself forward. He reaches a wider opening at the other side. The real guy oh, crawls snap. forward towards a ledge. Lit by the lamp is a drop about twice his height. Oh my god! There's already a rope here. He gently climbs down. His worn-out leather shoes touch the ground. This is as far as he can go. And it is time for work to begin. What he is working <gasps> on is another opening. At the moment, it's too small for anyone to fit through. But he will chip away at it until he can shove himself right through Bro, the Bro, it's pretty side. much too small for a, like, even him side, to fit through, man. 
is this. An otherworldly cave structure dripping Whoa. with pristine white crystals. Damn, that sounds like a hate group. Every day for months, he has been removing rocks from this crevice. <laughs> to him, this is all just routine. Yeah, okay. Hi. So he shimmies further into the gap his body contorting to the shape of the crevice as he wriggles his way in. Oh! The walls becoming so tight that he can no longer use his arms. The cave is like a grandma hugging you. It's too tight. Then, about Loose it up. Way, he stops. Huh? Hmm. The lantern. It's starting to dim. Oh. He will need to go all the way back to the surface to refuel the thing. He sighs. He slowly shuffles back out pushing the lantern with his shoulder. Then, oh no, Din <gasps> cracked He knocked it darkness. over. He has knocked over the lamp and it But that's like broken. true pitch darkness. That is like the, oh, hell no. That's like my de inner demons kind of darkness. It's too shady. That was some edgy Tumblr shit. Y'all heard me say that? What am I even saying at this point? What am I? <laughs> the man breathed I'm edgy and I'm 12. <laughs> He had been in worse situations before, and he was confident he could never worse situations his way to the surface through feel alone. Oh, okay, he damn. He around with his feet to find something he can push against. Ah, there's something, he thinks. Okay, but what if it's unstable? But what he doesn't know is that he's pressing against a loose rock on the ceiling. You know what, as though? As That's a great visual, because I literally would not have had that thought. Unless they showed me this visual right here, where it shows this like rock that's definitely like kind of loose. So good on them for creating such a good visual, because that's the only reason why I even had that thought in the first place. As he puts his weight against it, it comes free. <gasps> oh shit! A solid piece weighing fifteen kilograms lands directly on his ankle. It aches, but he's okay. It doesn't feel as though his ankle is broken, just badly bruised and caught under really? the rock. So he shuffles to move the rock away. Suddenly, gravel. A lot of gravel. Oh, it falls no. onto his feet, his legs, his torso, and the weight of it all forced the rock harder down. Dude, onto his I've foot watched and Minecraft. And Have you seen it when like there's gravel and it starts falling down? And, push, and it like, yeah. I've seen Minecraft. <laughs> Okay, don't judge me and how I have knowledge of the world, okay? I don't judge all y'all. I mean, maybe I do a little bit, but... Like... <laughs> Every time he tries to move, mm -hmm. more rubble falls. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Do, 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 do. He is stuck. This is Sand Cave. This man is Floyd Collins. Hi, Floyd. He is trapped in absolute darkness. 60 feet deep below the earth. All of his limbs held in place. I just feel like this is some dumb at people shit. At the very shit. bottom of this. Oh. Oh. What? Is the crystal even valuable? Like, how do you even bring it back up? Like, I don't understand. What, why would you... But before I tell you what happens next... Okay. Add time. <gasps> Add time! Of people trapped in a cave. World of Tanks. World of Tanks is not only the best game I have ever played, it is the only game I have ever played. <laughs> it's like cars, but tanks. Picture this. You're a hot new T-3485M, and you've oh. just joined the battle because some... I know nothing well about tanks. Tank bagged your oh, entire shit. family. Tank it's bagged? Time for revenge. <laughs> You must use strategy. You must use stealth. You must use your wits to defeat your enemies. Use M long range or short range. It's available. Question. Can you actually be stealthy with a tank? Because I did say stealth there. Can, cause that's like a real, can you actually do that in real life? There's no such thing as stupid questions. Only stupid answers. So it's on you, okay? The Otis is not on me for asking that. Okay? <laughs> on console, but I want you to get it on PC. Imagine a world war, but there are tanks involved this time. Yeah, now you're getting it. When you've seen as many messed up tanks as I have, you get a little cynical about the world. Damn. My God, I'm gonna be sick. Look at all the oh. different tanks. You can collectomize and customize them all. Baby, Massive baby and tank. You can constantly <laughs> team kill and ruin other people's good time. What the f***? I'm on your f***ing case. 
Did I mention it's historically accurate, especially the Japanese robot tanks? Oh, look, the tanks are kissing. <laughs> what if uh, our tanks met up and we, uh, um, uh. <laughs> What if our tanks been up on the battlefield? Tank gun! <laughs> Aggressive! Use the invite code TANKMANIA and get the Excelsior. 250k credits. Other stuff. Go to the link in the description. Dude, other stuff sounds sick. Code, TANKMANIA. You think I'll be sold on that? Tanks. Put that on one screen. Then, on a second monitor, you'll watch the next hour of this video while you play the game. Perfection. I'm contractually Brilliant. obliged to say thank you for being a friend. Okay, that's adorable. Oh, thanks, empty kid. Go on without me. No. Uh, use your repair consumable. It's too late, kid. Tank care of my family. <laughs> Take care of my family. Get it, 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 get it. Add. <laughs> I love him. He's so good. <laughs> Unable to move. He huh? can feel the sharp crystals on the ground poking into his back. The ice melts above him, traces across the ceiling, and drips directly onto his face. Dude, that's like a form of water he torture. He himself against the dripping, except that his right arm is wedged against the roof of the cave, and his left is stuck in place underneath his torso. The cold water dripping onto him pools underneath him. Oh my so it God. took slow, steady breaths in the concentrated dark. When he did attempt to shuffle, more gravel and rocks would tumble oh my God. and pile onto his feet, so nothing would work. He raked his fingers against the wall until blood pooled underneath his nails. Oh no! And he realized that there was only one option left. Call out for help. But wait, 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 wait. Who is Floyd? And why did he even go into it? Okay, exactly. That's my big ass question. Because why would you ever do this? Why? I don't understand. Motherfuckers in Kentucky, you got nothing else better to do? I'm sorry. Can y'all like... I, oh, actually, I have no idea what you can do. Go eat some fried chicken. Kentucky fried chicken. That's all we go. That's, what else do you got there in Kentucky? Anyone? <laughs> now that I think about it, maybe this is the only thing he got over there. Floyd started his caving career at the tender age of six. Growing up, six exploring years old? the caves of Kentucky was practically all he did. He would go off on his own, disappearing into the caves for many hours at a time. Oh, Have you seen that movie, The Descent? It was a lot like that. He grew up and he became embroiled in the Kentucky Cave Wars. Now, there's what? Way too much to go what does that even mean? The summary version is there's this huge network of interconnected caves called Mammoth Caves. Okay. It's actually the largest cave system in the world. Wow, learning something new today. Right in the middle of it, Cave City, real name. So, of course, there are dozens of cave entrances on private property all over the place. Now, farmland in this region has very poor soil and things do not grow well here. So, cave okay. tourism as a source of income quickly became the prominent thing okay kentucky y'all need actually more better and better things to do holy shit besides jumping into raggedy ass caves oh hell no you know what's even crazier a while i think like back in like 2016 2017 or something no it was like 20 i don't know who gives a fuck about the year it's just a while back anyways um I went on a cruise and oh my god, it was like 2015. Sorry, <laughs> around there. I don't, I don't remember. Anyways, uh, we went on a cruise and like one of the stops, you could like go off and like go explore a cave with a guide. And my survival instincts, even though there's a guide, even though there's 20 other mo fuckers there, I said hell no, I ain't going to no raggedy ass cave where it's dark. <laughs> like if I slip, hit my head once, dead, dead. I tell you, why am I gonna risk it? Why well, am I going to risk it? I'm already risking it by being on a boat in water. You know what? Maybe I'm a little bit too paranoid. Hmm. <laughs> but you know what? I am perfectly content being on the ground. I perfectly content being in well-lit rooms too, okay? Even when I'm gaming like a little gremlin with my hoodie on, I can have a bright room on. I don't mind. Darkness is kind of creepy. <laughs> However, a problem. There are a very large number of caves... But there are only a limited number of tourists. So competition yeah, okay. rapidly escalated. Yeah, who's really going to Visit Kentucky for real? Cave. No, no, no. Visit my cave. 
big signs were erected saying, ah, tourists, come to me. Ah, mine is definitely open. Mine is the best. Oh, that's nice. then competitors would respond by saying, hey, by the way, we're open, but don't go to that one over there. <gasps> it's really shitty. Ooh. In fact, it's dangerous. This kept going further. By the end, they were blocking off the trail to each other's property. Damn, y'all shady. <gasps> and hiring people called cappers who would dress up as policemen. Cappers? And tell tourists, no, 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 you can't Stop the cap. That one. No, it's illegal. Despite the fierce competition, wow. Floyd found the cave on his property and he started they hired cosplayers. <laughs> advertising it to tourists. Of course. Role players. God came. damn it. <laughs> All right. He thought, what if I found something really special and unique? Then surely people would have to come to my cave. You'd have to it. find me. So I'm special and unique. Exploring <laughs> and explore <laughs> until he found this hollow. It was filled with big gypsy... I'm gonna just say it now. You're obligated to laugh at least one of my jokes during this entire video. I'm a fucking cancer patient, okay? You're a dickhead if you don't laugh at least once at one of my bad jokes, okay? It's on you now. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm out of the hospital. I've been gone for the past 10 days. I've been uploading videos over on my other channel uh, while I've been away. Alicia X Life. Alicia X Death is my, like, this is my other channel. Uh, they're completely different types of content. Other ones, anime reactions. This one is whatever the hell I feel like doing. Uh, but yeah, my health hasn't been too great recently, so I've been kind of just gone for the past 10 days. But I'm back now, so I'm hopefully going to be more consistent again. Uh, it's all just based on my health. I don't really put too much pressure on myself. Uh, but yeah, I hope you do hit subscribe and stick around. Crystals. And when you were in there, it felt like a completely alien world. But it was barely accessible. This small tunnel is the only way in. He would need to dig for months <sighs> to open it up to tourists. But he knew he could do it. Back to the competition. They knew Damn. the value of this cave. They knew the potential. They wanted it for themselves. And they wanted Collins gone. Wow. A few months prior, a group of five men showed up to his farm unannounced. Ah, hand over that lease, Floyd. They said. Floyd, of course. What the hell? Refused. Yeah, you could just So they take... turned to violence. What? Knocking him down and savaging the helpless man until Homer, Floyd's brother, came running out of the house with a shotgun. But Floyd was not deterred. He spent 12 okay. hours a day. That brother is a massive W, though. Clearing gravel and stone, chipping away at that passage. He would open it up to tourists. Cletus, let me go get my gun real quick. Hold on. <laughs> you know what? Whenever I do that accent, I always think about how I want to play like Red Dead. I've never played it before, but I feel like I could really do a good job at role playing being a, a sh oh, I could say a swashbuckler, but that's for pirates. Damn, maybe I'd suck ass. And. <laughs> make his cave an incredible attraction and make his dreams come true i hope his dreams come true that'd be like a nice story so there's floyd in the dark yelling oh my god i forgot he's stuck in the cave oh the jesus i hope it's like a good After story a while, like it's like a voice would happy ending and he would have to sleep to recuperate he would then wake sometime later remember where, where his mom and dad and begin all i know is that he has a brother with a shotgun here he remained in the dark for the next 20 three hours at least he has water technically right because he can drink the water that's dripping on his face and pooling right like he can uh you know what i'm saying you might wonder, how come no one's come for him after 23 hours yeah well, good question sand cave resides on a 200 acre farm there are several homes on this property with other families oh my god one of them of course is colin's house where floyd's father Lee okay. resides. Oh, you got a daddy? Lee and Floyd constantly get into fights about how to run things. Oh, Lee no. Lee wants his son to concentrate on farming, and Floyd wants to concentrate on cave tourism. Arguments would often... Okay, well, that's kind of fair for them to argue about this, because, like, you know, in Floyd's defense, like, earlier, Internet Historian pointed out that the, the farming and agriculture of the area is really, really bad. So, like, following his dream since he was six years old of diving in caves... Makes a lot of sense. But obviously the dad wants to make sure he has more of a stable job or like a more realistic job because you never really know if you can actually clear out the keys properly enough to have people actually tour in them. So I get it like on both sides. Man. Get heated. And Lee was oh, also shit. a bit of a drunk. It was doubtful that he would even notice if his son Floyd. Oh was my missing. God, Lee! So not helping things. Floyd regularly lodged at two other homes on the farm. Oh my God. So when he didn't return to one host, uh -huh. they would presume that he was staying with the other. And even worse still, he was known to occasionally sleep in the cave. Oh my God! Enough, Thirty hours in there without resurfacing.
regardless. Around the 23 hour mark, a few locals started to suspect that, hey, something might be wrong. Thank they God. To check up on him. And here, they spotted his jacket still hung up. Oh, good. Unusual. They went deeper. However, there was only one person small enough to make it as far as the turnaround room. This was a 17 year old Jewel Estes. Well, for him to, to even go down all the way to the turnaround room is already super impressive. Can we agree on that? Because, like, it was already a narrow fit to get to the turnaround room, but then it just gets, like, hellish to go through there, right? Like, so that's really screens. cool. But if he yelled, Floyd would probably hear him. Floyd! And Collins yelled. But what if there's dust in his throat? <gasps> oh, shit, he yelled back. Estes emerges from the cave. Four. Okay, we know he's trapped, and we know where he is. So, a whole troop of locals show up. Out of my way. Say a bunch of men who would confidently charge into the cave. <laughs> but I'll once save they reach the final squeeze. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. They would charge straight back out again. Yeah. Saying things like, There's no way any man could fit in there. Out of my way, they would say as they were heading in the reverse direction. Yep. So a few more hours passed. Word would spread around Cave City and the neighboring areas. Slowly, a crowd formed outside Sand Cave. Oh, okay, well, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Over in Louisville, Floyd's 22-year-old brother, Homer, he gets a phone call. Oh my God. Uh, hello? I the shotgun see. brother. Ah, my brother. He's trapped in a cave. I'm on my way. Homer jumps on a coach and makes his way to Floyd's cave. Oh my god, is he not dead by now? Up to the scene. I guess 38 he hours isn't that bad, right? He walks past the growing right? crowd of unhelpful onlookers and makes a beeline for the cave to save his brother. Yeah, In a real he goes, one. Down the chute, through the narrowing Please passage, tell me you go past the turnaround. Down on his hands and knees towards the turnaround room. And when he arrives, he does not hesitate. <gasps> he squeezes... Oh my god, he actually goes through! Scrambles his way through to the ledge on the other side. He sees Floyd below and slides down to meet him. Floyd! Sup? Right, probably wasn't that <laughs> casual. Oh, yeah. thank God you're here. Homer took a moment <laughs> to shine his light around the area and assess the situation. It was not good. This rock formation is going to prove almost impossible to work around. All right, so let's have a look. Floyd is here. The rock is oh here. Oh my God. He has... It's he, like, look how close he is to being like, actually freed but he's trapped like oh that's so oh i hope his brother can get him out oh Angle. he's surrounded by rubble and there's a pocket of gravel above him ready to fall however because this opening is so small yeah. there are only two viable ways of reaching floyd and that gravel option one the most obvious feet first but if you do this you have to kind of Squat. What if we put a contortionist in there? Motherfucker's real the bendy. <laughs> Otherwise, option two, come down head first. That will give you better access, but you're trying to move hundreds of pounds of gravel upside down. Yeah. Worse yet, there's barely an inch around Collins on either side. So good luck getting your arm down near Floyd's ankle to actually free him from the <gasps> wedged rock. Oh, true. He whips around and yells. Quickly, some food and drink. They send it through. But first, oh. Homer gives Floyd a liter of coffee to warm him up. Then, as many sausage sandwiches as he can stomach. Wow. He manages to down nine of them. Nine? Dietary advice has changed since the 1920s. Feeling better? <laughs> <Much> better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, you know what? Honestly, whatever works at that point. Whatever works. <laughs> Just... Then Homer went to task. He began removing rocks and gravel, tiny scoop at a time with the help of an old syrup can. A, sir a, a syrup can? Wow, they still have the can? For the next eight hours he toiled, first with hands, then once enough was cleared, using a crowbar to Whoa. scoop behind his brother. They're gonna get him out! Away sharp protrusions as he went. It was slow progress, virtually futile. While holding up his body weight with one arm, he would have to use the other to scoop away gravel. Then watch as new gravel would suddenly fall from above. This is the best brother in the entire world. Homer stayed for as long as he could. 
but after several hours, he was ragged. His teeth chattered uncontrollably. His lungs choked with dust. Oh my God. And the skin on his fingers shredded from the rubble. However, something new. By the time Homer reached outside, he was yeah. surprised to see a mob of approximately 100 <gasps> men and women standing around, drinking, squabbling, and Wait. talking big game about how they too were going to save Floyd. Oh my God. Yes. Prey on the male ego. Quickly! Oh, also the female ego, because there's also women there too. Prey on their egos of them having savior complexes just so that they can help your brother. Yes! Be the one that rescues him. Go in there, motherfuckers. Go in there. Is this Peaky Blinders in the background? <laughs> Chris was also present to help people gawk from afar. Homer shunned them all and rested up in a small tent in front of the cave. Strangers immediately <gasps> crowded around him to ask innocent but frankly frustrating questions and offer unsolicited obvious advice as well as wildly the worst solutions. listen listen you just have to untie his shoes free the foot free the man right fellas no no, no, no. let's hire a contortionist we get a hammer and a chisel we'll have him back all right maybe this guy is spitting though hey hold on shut the fuck up maybe this guy's maybe he's on to something no! No! I'm this motherfucker! This is me! He's my self-insert for this video! No! Back by supper. <laughs> ah, we, we should jerk him off, right guys? Alright, I made that third guy up. But, you know, I mean, the idea. a lot of these guys he probably drunk, needs it. by the way. So Get his rocks off! Really huh? Alright. From zero to 100. <laughs> New idea. How about dynamite? We'll simply blow him out. One group formed, insisting it was a great idea. And Y'all are saying, stupid as motherfuckers. No, no, no. The explosion will kill him, and the weight of the new rocks will surely crush him. Yeah. They shouted at each other for a while, until someone suggested, Hey, how about gas torches? We can use acetylene torches to cut through the rock and make the hole bigger. No, no, no. That'll cook him, or the gas will fill the cave and kill everyone inside. Yeah. They fought over that, too. Is it legitimate? Far, the most common suggestion was to simply cut off the foot. Never mind that the foot itself was unreachable, and never mind that he'd lose so much blood he might not make it back to the surface, and never minding even more that Floyd was strongly reluctant to the idea. Whatever you do, don't, don't cut, cut my foot off. <laughs> Homer could have easily ignored I'm sorry. all of this <sighs> pointless bickering, except that not one of them would just brave the damn cave and continue shoveling away the gravel. Oh my god, Before they're all shitheads! The Bold, fearless men would strut into the- Do you know what, though? Can I really call them shitheads? Because would I do the same? Ain't no way I'm going to that motherfucking cave. That motherfucking straight up die, pussy! Ain't no way I'm going to that cave to help you! You kidding me? Yo, dumbass got stuck in there? Stay stuck, bitch. I ain't doing it. I got a life to live. <laughs> like, oh, hell no. Like, <laughs> so, you know what? I really can't judge these people. What I can judge is their egos for being like, I'm going in there. I'm going to get it done. Like, for those people, I can judge. But, like, yeah, I definitely wouldn't help. <laughs> the cave with sandwiches and blankets, then reach the turnaround room and immediately lose their nerve, then dump it all outside of the hole, and then return back outside and go, oh, absolutely. No, he says, thanks for the food. Thank you so much. Yum, yum. No one would go through that squeeze. Holy shit, they have, look at, look at this. They have all their bottles and shit there. Wow. All of them would fail. Jesus. But it, it makes sense, though. Like, holy hell. Oh, he's dead. 70 hours? Second. Crushed? So far, Homer has been the only person who has been face to face with Floyd. And that would continue. Mind to you, like, just 70, what, 72 hours? It's only a few days, but like, and he has food and he has like nourishment and drinks and stuff. And he has his brother checking on him, so I guess he's probably still alive? Damn. Until. Here we are at the Louisville Courier. There's a spirited young news hawk named William Miller. Hi, William. He's talking to his boss, and he's trying to convince him that it's a great idea for him to cover the story of the man trapped in the cave. Listen up, boss. I'm hearing talk of a man in a cave. He's stuck down there, and I'm I want to get down there, too. <laughs> get to the nitty-gritty, you hear? This is an opportunity for some good PR, Miller. I'm in. But I want us to sponsor that rescue. Picture this. 
Man Saved from Cave by Louisville Courier, the finest newspaper in the state. Ah, that'll drum up plenty of interest. 24 carat idea, boss. I'll make it happen. I'll get down there too sweet. So off Miller goes to Floyd's cave. Buddy boy, what? Back over at the cave, Homer is sitting outside trying to recuperate. As Miller wanders up. It, okay, Homer what's up, Miller? interested in giving an interview. He wants someone to help. So as Miller asks questions, eh? Homer tries his best to show contempt. Yeah. Sure. Frustrated, Homer bluntly says, Listen. You want more information? The hole's right behind me. Why don't you go take a look yourself? <gasps> Miller thinks for a moment. Then says, yeah, all right. He grabs a lamp. Is he actually going to go down there? Down to enter the cave. As he walked, cold water filled his shoes. He was stepping in newly formed puddles. That water is coming from the inside of the cave as the temperature slowly increases and the frost inside melts. Oh. The stable environment of the cave is starting to change. Oh my god. No. That is thanks in no small part to the growing crowd of gawkers. To stay warm, they were building fires and hanging around the entrance of the cave to shelter from the elements. But nonetheless, Miller presses on and all that's left oh, so the is the final squeeze and he's there. He stops. He takes a moment and decides to call out to Floyd. Floyd! Hearing there is someone on the other side, he feels ashamed not to try. <gasps> Into the dark he went. Wow, he's a real the one! Nine inch squeeze. The crystal gypsum cuts into his elbows and tugs at his clothes. He gets snagged. He's spluttering through the pools of muddy water. He stops, collects himself. And pushes on. Oh uh, no! If yeah. I got if I started to get caught on shit, I'd be panicking. I wouldn't even be like in there in the first place. But if I ended up somehow magically being in there, like if I was in a Saw movie, you know what I'm saying? And I'm in this situation, and I get pulled on some shit. Is it too dark to say it? If I was in this situation, I'd just kill myself. <laughs> Is that? I ain't trying to live, bro. Like it ain't worth it. Like it's just not worth it. Oh no. It's not the way, blah, blah, blah. It's not the easy. Give me the fucking. I want the easy way out, bitch. Can I alt afford the life? Billy, this is terrible. If he gets stuck in here, he can only hope that someone else can come in from behind and pull him out by the legs. But eventually, <laughs> he makes it through. Fantastic. He is now on his belly, looking down at Floyd. Wow. He sat right next to Floyd, ready to interview him. But Floyd didn't really answer any of his questions. At the moment, he is sitting in a pool of water that is This 12... is the most motivated and determined man I've ever seen execute a job. That's crazy, this reporter, that motivated. ...degrees, slowly sapping his body temperature. He is dying from exposure. Yeah. The cold is diminishing Floyd's mental faculties, and he can barely make sentences. There's nothing Miller can do. So he hurriedly turns around. He worked his way back through the squeeze, past the turnaround room. Oh, wow, he made it out and, and stuff. into the daylight. Homer turns to Miller. Proof <gasps> that he had made it all the way to Floyd is soaked onto his mud-stained clothes. Yeah. No longer frustrated with the young reporter, instead, he excitedly runs over to him. You and me, together, we can get Floyd out of there. Now, there were two people who could help rescue wow. Floyd. That's actually, uh, that's beautiful. Now, helping with the rescue was not the only thing that Miller did for Floyd. Perhaps even more crucially, his reporting was responsible for turning Floyd into a nationwide story. Miller took more people will be willing to go through? Relayed first person accounts and would spend many hours with Floyd himself in that cave. Wow. He gave an insight into the story that only a first person account could. And in turn, gave the public a figure who they would deeply relate to. Updates to the story would be printed in over a thousand local and national newspapers. That's you couldn't so escape. incredible. It was also the era when radio became a regular feature for regular Americans. Radio allowed something new, hourly updates, letting Ooh. people get engrossed into the story. So, mostly thanks to Miller, the story of Floyd over the next week would grow and grow. And everybody nice. wanted to know, will this man make it? I, that's what I'm wondering, too. Someone knew <laughs> the story. Robert Burton. 
He Hi, Robert. Become the third man to reach Floyd, a firefighter from Louisville. Oh, Could damn! Frame, but muscular. He got scratched up pretty good and soaked by the pooling water. But he made it through with little fuss, and he confidently lowered himself down to Floyd's position. Damn! It was not an optimistic sight. Floyd's condition was deteriorating. Well, we've got a heck of a problem here, but I think I can get you out with a rope. With a Floyd rope? An approval. Go on. We might just pull your bloody leg off. Just pull my leg off then. Get me out of here. Burden returned to the Fair enough? and faced the crowd. He announced. We will attempt a rope pull. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. You're just gonna tear his foot off. Yeah, Fuck his foot, on. man. What At this point, he's gonna rocks, die in there regardless. All that and there'll barely be a body left to bring to the surface. Yeah, that's true. He will get shredded through, but... Authority. The ligaments in the foot are strong. But if you pull on the torso without a harness, all you'll likely do is tear his internal organs. Oh. But Floyd is dying of exposure down there. The situation is becoming Damn it. desperate. Burden put caution to the side. The time for strategy is over. Now we try brute force. Damn, he's a gamer. <gasps> no. Shit. That <laughs> got me. I was so <laughs> Jesus. Ugh. Damn. Yeah, we get it. It's the creepy rock that's on his ankle. Dude, I hate every- ah! Why are they doing this? This is such a shit visual. Stop it. Stop it, I hate this. Lloyd. Lloyd. <laughs> you were too talented of an editor, internet historian. Freaking relax, okay? Because I'm already scared. <laughs> and you just make it- Ugh. My imagine. <laughs> We're here. We're gonna get you out of here. God damn it. After 79 hours in the cold water, he is delirious. Fading in and That's out good. of delirious. consciousness. Nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna put nah, this special nah, 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 harness nah. around you. Burden and Miller, they're here too. We got three more boys right up the cave. Holy shit, they're and actually gonna get him out. As hard as they can to get you out of here. Floyd was frightened. I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. No one knew quite how this would go. Floyd was given some food, some coffee, a large swig of whiskey, and a sedative. That sedative would keep him calm if his ankle bone is snapped or the skin on his foot is peeled off. Um, Floyd took the opportunity to appreciate being surrounded by friends and family. Go on, do it. All right, strap him up. Homer attached a harness. He ties on the rope. Miller gives the signal. Ready. Okay. Burden gives the final all clear. Okay. Ready. Everybody braced for the tug of war. Cave versus man. The winner gets Floyd. Three. Two. Is a rope gonna Do break? Uh. One. Oh. Wow. Force of six men pulled against the clutches of the cave. Floyd began to scream. His body was being pulled up from the rubble. The gravel was beginning to shift. Are they gonna Burden's get him out? calls echo through the cave. Come on. Floyd Come on. Screamed harder as well. All right. So Floyd is trapped laying down like this. But the pulling of the rope. Oh, fuck off. Up like this. His torso was being compressed and bent against the ceiling of the trap. It would kill him. Floyd's screaming intensified and through gasps was begging them to stop. But it did not stop. The agony continued. <gasps> on and on with no progress. Enough. Enough. You guys are killing him. Homer quickly spun around and started pulling against the other men. He threw his legs onto the rocks and propelled himself backwards. One w, man brother. versus five. I said stop. Coursing with adrenaline, he pulled the rope free from their clasp. Wow. W, the tug brother. Of war was over. 
the cave had won. Floyd fell back down. Homer, Miller, Burden, and the other three men were flat on their backs, panting for breath. The cave would not let this man go. The futility of the situation sank in, and all they could do was leave for now and rest. Outside, the number oh of spectators God. had increased to 200. And they buzzed and asked <laughs> useless questions, and Homer walked dejectedly past them. Yeah. He sat by thinking what he could do. The cause seemed hopeless. Homer? Yeah. Then, someone showed up who could turn things around. Wait, he looked what? up to see a childhood friend of both his and Floyd's, Johnny Gerald. Hi, Johnny. He was just the man for the job. He was an experienced caver, and he was an experienced cave-trapped person rescuer. Is the dad not coming around? <laughs> I know he's a drunkard, but it's been a few days, and your other son is now, I mean, your other son was working in Louisville, right? So I guess, like... But really, the dad didn't come visit, like, once? I mean, he could probably get free booze off somebody at the least, right? My son's stuck in a cave. Anyone got booze? You know what I'm saying? Alright, let me go see him. Well, look who it is. Floyd perked up immediately. Yay. Thrilled to see Gerald. The sparkle from Floyd's gold tooth could be seen in his smile. Alright, let's see what we can do. Gerald jumped down. And then... For the next three hours, Gerald went back to the original plan of digging away the rocks. The oh. stamina was good, and progress was surprisingly good as well. Wow! For several more hours, he continued. Just moving stone after stone. New one would fall in its place, and he'd move that one too. By midnight, he had enough room to shift position and clear some of the gravel that was at each side of Floyd's body. Gerald would spend several more hours scooping, and it worked. This guy's Slowly, incredible! More and more of Floyd's body was coming free from the rubble. The lower shoulders, his chest, even his hips and thighs. It was incredible progress, but Gerald wasn't done yet. He kept going until practically all of the rubble, except a few harder to reach piles down by his legs. This guy's moved. gonna get him out! The relief from the weight made it significantly easier for Floyd to breathe and flex his limbs. Over the course of those few hours, Gerald managed to scoop away more than a thousand pounds of debris. But there was still a lot more to go. And that rock by Floyd's foot was still holding him in place. Gerald is such a real one, though. Ger like, I cannot believe. Like, that's crazy. By 2 a.m., oh. Gerald was spent. He needed rest. And he was ready to head back outside. Floyd, tomorrow... You're gonna be a free man. Now here you might think that things will become straightforward. They did not. Now that that space had been cleared, Burden became convinced that if he could get down that passage again, he could free Floyd with another rope pull. Fate deciding with both feet or just one. So Burden marches up to the cave once again. But when he tried to enter, they shoved him in the other direction. The crowd was acting as a sort of phalanx, and anyone who tried to get in was told to get lost. They had been specifically instructed to not let anyone in, and they were Go especially ahead. opposed to Bird in making another rope pull after word spread about the disaster of the first attempt. He yeah. tried to reason with them. Let me try the rope pull again. It'll work this time. But they no. would not hear it. Oof. Go ahead. Of the three other people who could reach him, Gerald and Homer are out exhausted and sick, which leaves only Miller, who is tied up yeah. with work. With no. Burden barred from entering, Floyd was left on his own, wondering why it was that no one would visit him. Hello? Is oh, this there? is... It's so uh, sad. Like, I... Hey. Anyone out there? Now, the work Miller was doing was handing over reports to his boss about Sand Cave. Those reports would be fed through the news grapevine. To wow, those did really well for the Associated Press. The press that, that he works at, yeah. Large affiliate network. The word was spreading about Floyd. By afternoon, Miller was done with his work, and he hurried back to the cave. So he gets inside, and yeah, huh? His eyes didn't have to work half as hard to adjust to the dark. Someone had installed electric lights from the entrance right all the way down 
to Floyd. Miller popped down to the lower level. Ah, Floyd! Fancy seeing you here, buddy! When mm -hmm. Miller reached Floyd, he took the final bulb and attached it to his collar to keep him warm. Then, That's nice. reusing that syrup tin, he started offloading gravel into buckets. Those buckets were then passed up and down the cabin, like an assembly line. Let's go! And so it went on for the next few hours. Until he was too tired and needed to rest. Miller then took some time to have a bit of a one on one with Floyd. He said, You know, there are a lot of people in the news that are reading about you and have you in their prayers. Is there anything you want me to relay to them? Floyd had been in that Don't cave jump in for caves. over 100 <laughs> hours now. And seeing everyone working together, Floyd was overcome with a sense of hope and relief. Floyd wanted to pass on a message. Okay. Here is what he is quoted in the newspaper. I believed I would go to heaven. I can feel that I'm to be taken out alive and with both my feet. Oh. I kept thinking, what would happen if the rock above me would fall? It, it caused me to shudder. I kept thinking to drive my mind to something else, but it wasn't much use. I couldn't do much to help those who came to help me, but I knew that a lot of people were willing to do all in their power. It gave me courage. Tuesday morning, I thought to myself, four days down here and no nearer freedom than I was on the first day. Oh my How God. will it end? Will I get out? I couldn't think of it. I have faced death before. It doesn't frighten me, but it is so long. That is Tell dark. Them I am not going to give up. Tell them I am going to fight and be patient and never forget them. Oh, oh Meanwhile, my God. news of the incident kept growing. The entire Please country live. was captivated Please by live. story. Crowds huddled around newspaper stands each morning and afternoon, waiting to get any new drips of information. It became a water cooler topic. Did you catch the latest episode of Game of Caves? Game of Caves? He had the prayer power of practically every church in the county. Even the upper echelons of government were keeping tabs on Floyd. Oh, that's cool. Congress halted session to get their little updates. Mm -hmm. And even the president, Calvin Coolidge, took a glancing interest. By the end, the Floyd Collins incident would explode into the third largest non-political story between World War I and World War II. All of this excitement brought an inundation <gasps> of people to Cave City. Old population. What a bizarre story to cover. <laughs> new population, 10,000. Whoa! The bottles ran empty as people withdrew cash to spend around town. But they wouldn't have much to spend it on because restaurants didn't even have enough stock to feed all the new customers. Practically every hotel room in the county was taken, so residents capitalized with a 1920s version of Airbnb and charged outrageous fees to Yo, let's go! For places to sleep on their bedroom floor or in mattress-lined bathtubs. And 4,500 automobiles impatiently sat, backed up for two miles from 20 different to drive onto the Collins Farm, churning up all the pristine green fields with their tires and turning them into brown muck paddocks. Ah, uh, in reality, they Do already had... Those tourists? There's Miller, had, trying like, to free Floyd. Nutrition for their fields anyways. All right, a little bit of setup. Floyd, Miller, some remaining rubble, rock. For anyone to lift the rock by hand would be impossible because Floyd's body obstructs the hole. Miller yeah. grabs a crowbar and shoves it through the gap. Now he's going to lever it off Floyd's foot. Cool. The crowbar is now primed in place. Okay. Next, he takes a jack. He positions it on top of the crowbar okay. so that it will be forced against the ceiling. However, problem. That jack is too big. <gasps> it doesn't uh -oh. fit. We get a different Miller size one? up the tunnel for a smaller one, but this took some time. And when it arrived, too small. Won't reach the ceiling. Oh my god! <laughs> for another one, Miller takes two blocks of wood and bolsters them underneath the crowbar. Hey! So creative! The crowbar now sits higher, it fulcrums against the blocks, and the jack is sitting on top. All Miller has to do is expand the jack, which he will do using this spanner, holding it at the very tips of his fingers. Sounds easy. It's not, but that's the plan. Let's get him out of here. He turned Is this the wrench, gonna actually... the jack expanded, and the crowbar took strain. The whole thing slid apart with a pang. Floyd wasn't hurt, 
but Miller was contorting and exerting his whole body from back to fingertip. They tried again, same result. Undeterred, Miller caught his breath and gave it another shot. He slowly turned the jack. Pressure building. And this time, Miller could feel the rock move. It bloody moved. He kept turning the wrench and the rock moved a little more. His hands were shaking. Oh my god, he's gonna get him out! His arms are heavy. Pang. Mom spaghetti! Flew out. It all scattered apart. The rock painfully slammed back down on Colin's foot. Get it next time Fuck. Miller kept on trying, countless attempts. He kept pushing himself deeper into the trap, finding new approaches. Damn the blocks. No, try the blocks again. Clear some more rubble. Floyd, unable to help physically, is supporting him in spirit at least. Oh, that's cheering nice. him on. Yay. Yay. And, going <laughs> and going and going until he had nothing left. For the next four hours, he tried. No progress. Miller on was Wednesday now? He couldn't do this on his own, but he was the only one slim enough to get in through the gap. The group decided to concede for now and return to the surface. They would take just a small break, but it looked to everyone like there was a clear way to get this man out. Oh? So Miller and Burden crawl back through. Who are these fucking the backseaters outside? There's a clear way to get him out. We can all tell. You aren't down there. What kind of, the of backseat bullshit? As they made their way through, the cave was visibly sagging. The ceiling seemed lower. Parts were harder to navigate than before. Doubly so with their bruised and rock shredded hands. They stepped oh. outside and took in the fresh country air. But Hello, as country. their eyes adjusted to the light, they saw something new. A man named Henry Carmichael was standing in front of a Hello, sizable Henry. crowd of engineers and hard hats and soldiers in military uniform. Now, Henry is the superintendent of the Kentucky Rock Asphalt Company. The engineers are his employees, and the men in military garb are the National Guard. Oh, my now, God. Carmichael has been quietly looking at the situation from afar, and he is thoroughly unimpressed. This is no rescue operation. Once Miller and Co. call it quits, Carmichael had two of his employees do a proper survey of the cave and see if it was suitable to bring in his whole team of men. The two surveyors go in. Motherfucker, where have you been? <laughs> he goes, ah, these conditions aren't optimal. Okay, pussy, roll up sooner then. Oh, you want to talk shit? Get hit. Come up sooner. Do something. Crazy! I'm sorry. I'm forward, I'm heated. It was showing alarming signs of deterioration. You could see the splitting of the rock <gasps> above. It's Doors unstable for everybody to be in there. Place, or splintering. Small rocks tumbled down the walls. They soon came back with a report. It was not good. All right. So the following is a recounting of events from one of Carmichael's men, Casey Jones. Hi, Casey. <clears throat> Casey and another worker spent about an hour in the cave, surveying its condition, mm -hmm. looking at the boards, the ceiling, the stability of the walls. Yep. Casey continued deeper towards Floyd. He was fighting against his nerves. The mm -hmm. shifting of the rock pinged his every instinct to flee. But he could hear Floyd calling out for help in the distance. God. Summoning all of his courage, he pushed himself on. Good job, Casey. Through the final squeeze and over the ledge that looked down on Floyd. Rubble continued to drop from the ceiling, bouncing all around him. The ceiling felt closer to him than it was before, but maybe that was just the dark playing tricks? Please, come down. Uh, I can't right now, Floyd, but I will when I get back. Now, Casey is being oh. pulled in two directions. No, come back, come on. Let's get out of here already. Please, I'm so thirsty. Okay. Casey climbed down next to Floyd. Quick, okay. drink, said Casey as he tried to pour some coffee into Floyd's mouth. But Floyd turned his head and kept his lips pursed. The rocks were falling at a faster rate now. The loud cracking out above, sounding like thunder. You can't even blame Floyd for doing that, because, like, imagine the level of insanity or the level of in mental instability he's going through. Like, oh. He just wants, he doesn't want to be alone down there. Could you imagine? I just, oh. Oh, 
give me a joke or something. Lighten the mood. I'm so Casey upset. realized what was happening. Floyd was not really asking for a drink. Floyd knew that a cave-in was inevitable. Scared and approaching his fifth day trapped, he was completely at his wit's end. He knew he was about to be trapped in that cave, and he didn't want to be trapped alone. Oh, you a For bitch, God's Floyd? Sake, Casey, come on, you're gonna get us killed. Stay with me, please. Don't leave. Casey quickly turned away and scrambled back up the ladder. Good job, Casey. He made his way back through the. There's no reason for two people to be trapped in here. Scrambling against the cave walls, it seemed as if everything around him was shrinking. No. He made it out and oh, he thank joined God. his co-worker. They both turned around and watched on in horror as the yellow of the bowl was being swallowed by the dark. Rubble fell fast and heavy. Oh my god! No light could be seen at all. Rocks blocked out Floyd's panicked cries. The one route to Floyd was now sealed shut. A tomb of rock and dust. He doesn't get out? This is so depressing. Why would you recommend me this video? I mean, honestly, this video is so freaking it's good. Really, but I'm so sad. Ready for the day. They're feeling optimistic. Today will be the day that they get Floyd out of there. Oh and my they're God. packing some new tools to help them with the job. Wire to wrap around the wooden blocks. That'll stop them from slipping. And a blowtorch to carve away some of the rock, you know, make the hole a bit bigger. But when Miller got to the turnaround room, all of that optimism left him. Yeah. The entrance to the squeeze was now just a pile of debris. Miller froze, staring at it for a long while. Yeah. Then he sighed and did the only thing he could think. Make an opening through that rubble. But God, the Miller's the amazing. Way, the more fell in its place. Oh, no. It no. He persisted, ignoring the danger around him. Thud. <gasps> A large piece of debris landed on him. Luckily, it was only dried clay. He is uninjured. Oh, thank God. But recognizing the danger, Miller returned to the surface. Good. Fifteen minutes later, he emerged from the cave with a bloodied up nose and bruises down his back and shoulders. Burden caught sight and races over to him. Miller just says, for God's sake, don't let anyone go back in there. Miller leaves the site. Burden doesn't know what to do. Over at the house, Homer is terribly ill and out of action. Oh, and that Homer. just leaves... Gerald. Now he comes my hey, childhood friend. He hears the news and he is livid. He told the crowds to keep away or the whole thing would cave in and they didn't listen. Then exactly that thing happened. And what were they supposed to do now? The rest of the day was spent squabbling and bickering over who was to blame. Yeah, that's you fair. You the cave in. No, you caused the cave in. Oh, cave your bloody head in, mate. <laughs> and Floyd spent the rest of that day <laughs> alone. Oh. This motherfucker dying down there for sure. For the sure. surveyors continued checking the cave throughout the day. At 6 p.m., Carmichael had ordered everyone to an assembly. Gerald took the floor. He was going to give this one last shot. Gerald addressed the crowd. Okay. Listen up. There's death down there. The walls and ceilings are crumbling. Yep. Unless you're determined to take the biggest chance you ever took in your life, tell me now and stay outside. Next, they told all the Gorkas to get the hell out of the cave. Good. Clear off. And so, Gerald went in and out of that cave half a dozen times, working away at the rubble, blocking access to floor, leaving only when he suspected another cave-in or to get food and water. Men on the sidelines were supplying new timber. A group of men helped <gasps> Gerald to, to create more stability and guard against further collapse. Gerald toiled away at the pile, eager to reach his friend. He works They're steady, doing it. Mindful of the danger. There's no way. Right above him, bit by bit, he reduced that. I believe. Until a light. He called out, yelling updates through the hole. Please be alive. Bad news. We can't reach you, but hold on. We're coming. Gerald continued. The pile got smaller still. The gap was large enough now that Gerald thought he might be able to fit. Okay, that's enough. Floyd, I'm going for now. But when I get back, I'm going to get you out of there. Gerald scrambled back And they say this to him a lot, huh? To the men, and through panted breaths, he said, Gather the equipment, and in an hour's time, it's going to be me and Floyd coming out of that cave. Holy 
Shit. Gerald entered Sand Cave for his final time. The walls had been reinforced, but mud and water was accumulating everywhere. Oh my God. He waded through it and pressed on past the danger of the sand. You got this, buddy? With determination on his face and a grease gun clutched in his right hand, he scrambled towards Floyd. Oh, just slip him but out easier. Before the final squeeze, he stopped. It was all gone. Another cave in, even worse than the first. He thought about how he could have been on the other side of that rubble. His mind raced, weighing out what to do. He shouted, Floyd! As a not so subtle reminder of the danger he was in, a rock fell from the ceiling and cracked Gerald across the head. Jesus! Probably just a small one. He felt around for blood and kept shouting, Floyd! He could definitely hear a voice, but it was faint. Gerald was scared that this was Floyd's last shot at rescue, and he threw himself against the pile and pulled it away with finger and nail. Oh my god! Launching the debris behind him with force, tearing at the pile like a man on fire. Dust bellowed, rocks flew, and he kept shouting out for Floyd as oh, he went. poor thing! Until finally, the cave had had enough. It let loose a large No! Jade please don't! Aimed straight at Gerald, striking him on his back. Gerald stumbled out of that. Oh, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. Thank God, Gerald. And defeated. I was like, don't let the, cl like the cave claim more than just one person, please. Only after the cave-ins did they start to think about all of the things that they could have done. Oh, the Wait, hindsight. Why did we rig a portable telephone line? That would have been incredibly simple here in 1925. Yeah, why have we been running in and out to deliver updates? Why didn't we give him an AM radio? He could have had something to listen to and receive messages of support from the public. Wait, why don't we rig up a tarpaulin so we could lift his torso up so he wouldn't be slowly dying of exposure? Oh god, why didn't we run a feeding tube? That's also a technology we have in 1925. All too late. Now what? God. The one route to get to Floyd is Dude, closed hindsight's such a forever. bitch. <laughs> that meant two options. Okay. Number one, capitulation. Surrender him to the cave. Well, number two. Dig down from directly above. Holy oh. shit! Oh, hell no! Are they serious? Oh, just, ma oh, just make a new entrance, forehead! Is that, <laughs> that's crazy! Now, the prospect of digging from above seemed almost fanciful. At least, it did in the beginning. But luckily, they had some help. Owing to Miller's reporting, Floyd had become practically the most famous person in the country. The rescue had become a high priority for the governor of Kentucky. I Lieutenant General Denhart enters the scene. What up, Denhart? He's been Aye. updated on the situation, and following shortly behind him is a small army of miners and engineers. Hello. He declared to the despondent crowd, Gentlemen, I am here on behalf of the governor. The purse strings of Kentucky are open. Take this oh, damn. blank check and bring that man out alive. Oh, shmoney! Floyd in that cold, wet confine could not have imagined the scale of the operation that was going on 55 feet above him. Holy hell, dude! Authorities assumed control of Colin's rescue. Dinhart gave Carmichael control over the site and Carmichael raced to get to work. Carmichael rallied up his men, his fleet of expensive high-tech machinery. Professional mm. groups were brought in from all across the state. No That's actually so was cool, what the hell? Effort of a few individuals. It was a professional and organized rescue. No more squabbling and standing around. Everyone knew what they had to do and they were working as fast as they could. Are they, they actually could. gonna get him out? It's Thursday now. But just as hopes were rising, they were once again dashed against the rocks. What happened? They had all of this state-of-the-art machinery shipped in and assembled by the engineers and rearing to go. And it was all worthless. See, the problem is the cave drew air into it. These diesel-powered engines pumped out enormous volumes of choking exhaust. Oh, so you're Within just kill the guy. The cave would be filled with carbon monoxide. And he would just die. And Floyd would be dead from asphyxiation. Yeah. Oh, hell. Just as quickly as solutions would arise, the cave 
would parry them away. It refused to let this I love the way he go. narrates this to make it like the cave is its own entity. It's so cool. This useless machinery was now blocking the path to Floyd, which means they would have to spend the next couple of hours disassembling all of it and moving it away. Hmm. Because they're about to dig a 55-foot pit the old-fashioned way. Oh, what God hand. intended! Hell yeah, feller! Carl Michael's expertise was in Did his dad never visit the, <laughs> the cave below? Over to <laughs> That's crazy. We haven't seen his dad once since they mentioned he's a drunk at the back start. Of the envelope map. I've got 75 men. They can dig at two feet per hour, and we have to go 55 feet deep. That means we can get to those men in roughly 30 hours, give or take. Now, is it possible that Floyd could survive for another 30 hours? Absolutely. Really? Four men started he doesn't have pace. food or water soft, or anything, right, now? But as they got deeper, it became more difficult. The deeper the shaft, the narrower it became. Soon, instead of four men, they could only fit two. Carmichael understood well that this was a race against time. So it was important that these two men were working at full capacity. Also, oh, they swap Carl them. Michael had Rotation, a crew right? of men on the sidelines, yep. poised to dig. That's and smart the way to do that it. Either of the two men in the hole slowed down. Oi. They pulled them out and threw in a new one. Yep. Nonetheless, progress slowed the deeper they went. About a quarter of the way down, they reached rock, <gasps> and one of the men would have to work a pickaxe, leaving only one to shovel. At this step. Rubble couldn't just be flung into a pile. They had to start loading it into buckets, which would have to be pulled to the surface on Damn wheels. it! Then men outside were ready with wheelbarrows to cart that down Oh, damn! Okay. Time passed. We still have... Hours passed. <laughs> Am I being Night too optimistic? Do we still today. even have hope anymore? The day was hot. This was yet another problem, because it's early February... There's tons of ice still in the ground, and its exposure to the midday sun was causing it to become unstable. And the ground was becoming soft. What happens if it's, like, because, like, what happens is, right, is that the ice would melt, it would hit the ground, but then after that, you have to, like, start worrying about the factor of when it gets cold at night again, it all freeze and create, like, like super... Super difficult conditions to even keep breaking through. As a result, progress slowed once again. Just half a foot per hour. There was little for Colin's friends and family to do, but watch the clock and pray. Interestingly, though, mm. there were a lot of people on the sidelines. Floyd wouldn't have believed the scene above him. What the hell? Probably everything but a Ferris wheel. Food stalls were set up to cash in on the crowds. Families and church groups picnicked in the fields. What? Despite prohibition, moonshiners showed up to sell jugs with all of those X's written on them. There was even a bloody juggler. I won't stop juggling till he's free. And old <laughs> okay, man okay. Was all there, right, buddy. Walking around, shaking his jar, and soliciting donations. But where were Homer and Burden? His dad's garbage, man. His dad is fucking garbage. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. But uh, that is such a sickening idea. Like, uh, listen, I'm all about the bag. I'm wondering, if I was in that situation, would I have done it too? Yeah. Yeah, no, I would try to profit off of it. Listen, I am, I am a slave to the almighty dollar, which you can help provide <laughs> by hitting that subscribe button. <laughs> Also check out my Twitter, Alicia X Life VT is in VTube. We're always be plugging. And Miller during all of this. <laughs> okay, let's back up a bit. People did not properly understand exactly how Floyd was trapped, and the news didn't help much either. So the obvious question started to arise: Why hasn't he been rescued yet? Just clear some gravel or pull a rope. How is this so hard? Motive was attributed. I heard they didn't even want to have him rescued at all. I heard that they're doing all of this for publicity. And Lee's activity soliciting donations, remember from before, further inflamed rumors. I bet Floyd isn't even trapped in there. These were all real rumors, and they <sighs> got worse. You know what? I've heard he comes out at night, and then he just goes back in in the morning. 
Other rumours included... I heard that after Floyd went into the cave, someone murdered him. Others said... I think they're withholding food and water from him so he dies. This whole thing is a fraud. As time went on, it was harder and harder to ignore the hoax claims. Then, people started to form righteous mobs claiming the whole thing was a fraud and they started to... Oh my God. In fact... Two people even went to the telegraph office and pretended to be Floyd sending telegrams to his mother, who, by the way, died several years ago. What Here's the what fuck? It said. Quote, please contradict statements that I am buried alive in Sand Cave. Stop. Tell mother I am all right. Stop. Am coming home. Stop. Floyd Collins. Naturally, the AP published these telegrams unquestioningly, and now word is out to the press that he isn't actually in the This is so sickening, all. dude. I'm, like, that mad. <laughs> I'm smadged. I'm, I'm sad and mad, dude. So, a hasty court-martial was arranged, and Homer, Miller, People and Gerald suck. were summoned. Like, oh, it's just... Ugh. That shit happens in modern day, too, where, like... People get skeptical and think the worst out of people, rather than being like, hey, this could just be a shit situation... And oh, like it's like backseat gamers, bro. But for someone's life, jeez Louise. They hold one session on Monday and another on Tuesday. Lee and everyone else is cleared of charges. A retraction is written and things carry on. The men at the dig were busy as ever. Yep. They set up pumps to mitigate the water in the shaft. Wow. Men continued working. The in innovation they're using to do this is actually radio. incredible. Here they are with strips of lumber to shore up the walls. Incredible. They were just short of half way. Can I be super honest? If there wasn't a lot of media coverage, and this wasn't like actually bolstering and creating more revenue for the entire like state, this would never be done for a single person. You would just let the fucker die in the cave. Realistically, right? Like in modern day, if this same thing happened in modern day, People would let him die because the news cycle would move on and there's less value in it, which is like the saddest part because it's like a beautiful story, people rallying together. But that would happen for like the first 24 hours of the news cycle. People would give up and he would die. Like, but in this, the news cycles are so prolonged and that there's actually enough care nationwide is on your side that it actually like had his, has a chance to save him. Right. And their rate of clearing material oh God, had slowed and to a mere four inches per hour. It was at that point. Damn, we ain't even at half a foot anymore. Yeah, okay. Sod the cavers. Tried the dynamite. But it hardly made a dent. Dynamite. And it risked causing the shaft to collapse. Yeah. But despite all of these challenges, there was an optimism in the air. Why? <laughs> because everyone was keen for their turn to dig. Oh. And because they had one more thing to latch onto. What? He is probably still alive. Wow! Now, how do they know that? Okay, so remember that light bulb around floor. Yeah, the neck? one that was supposed to keep him well, warm. Well, it's powered by a simple copper wire. Bare copper wire is subject to very minute fluctuations in resistance. So, an engineer rigs up a radio amplifier to this wire to read the current and see those small fluctuations. So if he breathes as it's on his chest, it would fluctuate to know that he's breathing. Holy shit! That is so smart! Is that what they're gonna do? There they were. About 20 per minute. The rate of steady breathing. Yeah! As his chest expands and contracts, they can read it from this device. That's crazy! And so, they kept going. Dude, this innovation is so smart. <laughs> it's just a fucking rat. <laughs> it's not even, not even breathing. And going. Oh. And going. 30 hours was the original estimate. Now 144 hours had come and gone and they were only at 44 Oh, feet. you know what though? Then rain fell. They're trying their best. Rain that mixed with dirt to make mud. Much of which then froze to make ice. Ice which expanded and damaged the integrity of the shaft walls. Come on, so dude. Can we not catch hour, a break around they here? Continued. Many more hours passed and they were getting close. 
but it was now 15 days since Floyd was first stuck in that cage. Holy smokes! mostly lost hope. That excitement in the newspapers was tempering down. Visitors began clearing out from Cave City. Yeah. Many still held on to hope, but their final lifeline, that light bulb, had burnt out. <gasps> and it wasn't possible to do any more readings on the radio amplifier without it. No one knew if Floyd was still alive. That motherfucker dead as hell. Another mm -mm. 51 hours would pass before finally they reached the 60 foot depth. I'm in. Chisel. A chisel is handed down. At 1.30 p.m. on that... Monday, February 16th, Sand Cave would open once again. Floyd had been pinned in that cave oh my God. for 17 days. It's like a part of me still has hope, but he just... without food. Survivable. 12 without water. Likely not survivable. The light bulb, a vital source of warmth, oh my burned God, out four please. days ago. But maybe oh. the moisture from the dripping of the cave walls provided him with some sustenance? There are stories of people surviving harsher extremes. A few final rocks were moved to allow Ed Brenner to squeeze in. Everybody stood by, absolutely silent, peering oh, into Oh, please, that hole. please, please. Ed scanned the opening with his flashlight, listening carefully for movement. Come then, on. Head first, he worked his way in. The flashlight. Oh, the music dimly seems hopeful. Walls. Oh, no. No, is that the gold tooth? He's dead as fuck, isn't he? Oh no, because they mentioned the gold tooth flashing earlier when his friend went down. Please don't. Reflection of something gold. No! The golden flicker was not the light bulb. It was the glistening of light reflecting off fuck, a gold Fuck, he's dead! Tooth. His mouth hung open. Floyd was dead. Come on, dude! Brenner was helped out of the cave and he delivered the news. Dead. A coroner would later state that Floyd succumbed to exposure and that yeah, they had missed him sense. by just three days. <gasps> About the he lived for- Oh my god, that is so upsetting. Oh, that is so upsetting. That the light bulb had gone out. When the light bulb went out, so too did his one source of warmth. If it had held out, Collins might have as well. But what would they do now with the body? The shaft walls were ready to fall inwards, and risking lives to remove a corpse was seen as just irresponsible. So it was decided by the authorities. To leave him. Floyd will stay in that cave. Man, that cave really did win. Win? Win? win. Really did win. It won. There we go. <laughs> Both well sentences were correct. It just what took a different do? wording. <laughs> the next day, they planned the funeral. The town emptied of people. And the shaft with Floyd at the bottom was filled back in. God. But that's not quite the end of the story. But if you hung on for this long, keep holding on. Because things okay. are going to continue to get interesting. What's that song? Keep holding on. Because we go make it through. Make it through. What's next, Marco? Just stay strong. Because you know I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Doesn't matter what you say. Doesn't matter what you do. Oh, I think it actually is called Keep Holding On. <laughs> I don't know. But first, let me do a wrap up where everyone is and all that stuff. Context, oh, cool. context. Context, the context. family already had financial hardship. Lee Collins wasn't able to raise much money from the donations. After the crowds cleared, he was seen searching the site scanning for empty bottles that he could resell. But the owner of the land, B. Doyle, and supposed friend of Floyd, was wholly unsympathetic. Oh. He put up a sign that said, Floyd's dead body, right this way. Come on now, take a look. Only 50 cents. Would I be okay if someone did this about me? If it was my best friend profiting off of my dead corpse, I think I'd be okay with it. It would have to be my absolute best friend. I have a best friend named Ant. And if Ant was the one profiting off of my corpse, you know what? I could deal with that. I'd be okay with that. Like morally, spiritually, yeah. 
If it was like any of my other friends, eat shit and die, motherfucker. No, no, no way, no how. Well, I don't know. Would you guys? That's a really dark question. But would you guys be okay with that? If someone profited off your death like that? I don't really mind that much. I'm already dead. It's 100 years later. The bee's dead. Let's call it even. Also, yeah, okay. remember those claims <laughs> of Kentucky being an open purse? Well, the state reneged on the deal. They refused to pay... <laughs> Sorry, Internet Historian's so funny. Fair enough, man. <laughs> many of the rescuers, and most of them went home without the promised pay. Many having sacrificed a week's worth of wages from missing their regular work. Mm. Some of them did make some money out of the situation, though. They signed on to a type of touring theatre called Vaudeville. Vaudeville. They the country, telling their personal stories of their attempted rescue. Miller received the best offer out of anyone, however. Oh? How about 50 grand to do the Chautauqua lecture circuit? It'll be worth nearly a million dollars in 2023 money. He declined. Ooh. He stayed loyal to the Louisville Courier, continuing his work there for several more years. Although, bit of a perk, he won the 1926 Pulitzer Prize for wow. reporting on Floyd Collins. Good for him. Okay, so back to the brother. Homer. Oh, he sorry, but that reporter was such a real one throughout that entire story. Money, and he agreed to do that vaudeville circuit. He stood on stage and shared with the crowd stories about growing up with his brother Floyd and detailing out the trip. Good, the brother deserves to but make Homer some squeeze off of it too. Why he was up here on stage trying to get money? He had a mission. I kept thinking of Floyd lying in the muck, where he had suffered beyond our power to imagine. I would never have peace of mind if you remain there. Yeah. He wanted the money to dig Floyd up and get him out of that cave. Wow. A couple of months later, he had it. All right, Jesus, so to Floyd, nice. April 17th, 1925. Homer and a team of excavators. They began to dig. Within a week, they had arrived at Floyd. But instead of coming down the same passage near Floyd's head, they approached from the other side. Oh, so they can remove the rock. And allowed them to remove the rock yeah. that trapped him in place. They lifted him up from his tomb and laid him down on the fresh air above. A couple of days later, Floyd was given an honored place at the family cemetery. Good. Next to his mother. A stalagmite was taken from Sand Cave, carved with his name and used as a headstone. And there he lay. For no, that's not actually what? where it ends. What? What more okay, is there? This is where it gets weird. Two years later, 1927. He's the already Collins family's buried. What? finances hadn't much improved. A dentist, Harry B. Thomas, walked up to the property and made. Motherfucker, are you gonna buy the corpse? <laughs> is that what's happening here? What's happening? How much weirder could it get with about Floyd? Like, what could you possibly do? The cave was ruined, right? Its structural integrity is fucked. Lee, and what could you even do at this, this point? Property to me, and I will give you ten thousand dollars. Now, Homer begged him not to, because at the time the government was starting to buy up tons of land in the area and turn it into national parks. They had to pay at a very competitive rate. But Lee was becoming a bit old and senile by this point, and frankly, it's doubtful that he cared. Dude, the, Lee is such a piece of shit, dude. Like, okay, we get it. You're a shit alcoholic father who, like, is just like, terrible. And your son, like, actually was a real one who took a shotgun and scared off motherfuckers off your baby. Like, bro, like, you were just not a father. Like, you suck. Not <laughs> Homer or Floyd or anyone else for that matter. It's 100 years later. He's dead now. Let's call it even. Okay, so, you know what? <laughs> that's, that's a good ass point. Like, no need to get mad about it. He's dead. Move on. Yeah, fair enough. Just stay for shit of him. Is in this land sale with Thomas, Lee agreed to a very odd clause. And that clause said what? everything on that property belongs to Thomas. And should he wish, for example. I was to kidding! He actually took the. He owns the body! Oh, that is gross! Are you serious? I was kidding. Take the dead body and re-embalm it and put it on display in something really tacky like a, I don't know, a glass coffin inside a cave, maybe. Then that would be his prerogative. Lee signed. There's no yes. way. And Thomas did exactly that. Oh, that's so Doyle nasty. Made Floyd's corpse a tourist attraction. That's right. Two bits of gander. Come and wonder at the incredible dead man who died in a cave. But to add insult to injury, it worked. 
Oh, that's visitors return to Sand Cave to the morbid curiosity at yeah. Floyd. Within a few months, Thomas had turned Lee's failing farm into a successful business. Yeah. The Collins family naturally is appalled by the situation. Yeah, as they should be. They object. They try a number of times to get Floyd returned to them, including through the legal system. But you signed it. But somehow, incredibly, the judge ruled in Thomas's favor. And so, there he lay for the next two years. Oh my god, there's actually pictures of the, the fucking casket. The oh, cave it's so gross. was not done with Floyd. People are so terrible. Until, Until someone hatched a plan. Two years what? later, it's midnight outside Sand Cave. Footsteps can be heard rustling through the. Oh my god! Fuck off! They're gonna steal the body! They're gonna steal the body! There's no way! There's no way! It's the brother? Who is it? But we know why they are here. To rob a grave. They sneak That's inside and climb so cool. over the rocks in the darkness. Regan I hope Floyd's it's the brother. Casket, they undo the latch and throw open the lid. There is his shriveled body. They throw him in a gunny sack and they race off into the night. Yeah, they did it! Hundred yards they carry dear Floyd, like a couple of sweaty Santas about to deliver a really terrible Christmas present. <laughs> Panting, out of breath, knowing that they're gonna get caught any minute, they reach the Kentucky Green River hillside. There's no time with a one. Two, three, they launch his body towards the river, and Floyd goes sailing into the air, up, up, into the starlit beyond. What the hell? It's like watching No Man's Sky graphics <laughs> from the video. <laughs> in a bush. Oh, God. <laughs> the two men flee from the scene. Okay, this is, this is so disrespectful to this fucking corpse, dude. This is so bad. <laughs> Well, now, no. the next morning, Thomas notices that the body of Floyd is somewhat missing, and he contacts the authorities. The police come, they dust the casket for fingerprints, and bloodhounds are given Floyd's scent and let loose into the hillside. Oh god, are they gonna bite a the corpse? A few hours later, they manage to find him, splayed out on a big shrub down by the river. But this time, with a leg missing, that same one that was trapped under the rock. Oh damn! So, despite his protests, it had been amputated neither the leg that's dark nor the culprits were ever found and while it would be nice to think that this was some well-intentioned duo that did this out of the kindness of their hearts yeah, i was kind of hoping it was floyd, it's much more likely that it was an act of vandalism because floyd was simply too much of a hot tourist attack. oh my god because there's other caves right the area was known for caves it's probably drawing all the attention because he's dead oh <gasps> that's even more twisted the following day floyd i didn't even was think of it that way into the cave back into his box and it was covered by a metal lid surrounded by a metal chain and locked with a padlock yeah. he was now more trapped than he had ever been this cave had spun fate once again to make sure that its victim Dude. Would never leave. That's so, so sad. Time passed. Floyd's body would continue to decay. The rot from his body would eventually rot the casket too. Uh. In every decade or so, it would need to be replaced. A few years later, he was no longer on display. But even then, he remained in that box for many more years. Oh, hell, Jesus, that's a long time. By 1989, Floyd's Cave was purchased by Mammoth Cave National Park, and it was closed to the public. There oh. would be no more visitors. Good. The entrance itself to Floyd's Cave was closed. Let him rest, steel dog. And bolted, then welded shut. But the Collins family never gave up objecting to <gasps> Collins' body being left in the cave. And here is where the story ends. In 1989, at the Collins' request, the National Park Service ventured into Floyd's cave. The brother got the body back? More than 60 year tradition, a team of people oh my God. over the course of several days to remove him from the cave. They yes! Him, left the cave, locked it behind them, and laid Floyd to rest at the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery. Good! After 64 years in Sand Cave, he is now finally at peace. Wow. End.
Thank you to Wendagoon as Floyd. If you. I just. I can't believe. This is so incredible. This was so incredible. I'm so glad he re uploaded it because I just. Oh, if I didn't get to see. Oh, I would have been really missing out. That. What a captivating story. Like, oh, the, the, the scandal, the souse, the, the greed, the caves. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm glad I caved in to uh, your guys' request to, for me to watch this video. And I'm glad he re-uploaded so I can actually watch it. Um, yeah, make sure in the comments below to recommend me more videos to check out uh, by pretty much anyone. Just don't put it as a link, links are cringe. Or video games to play as well, I do that too, uh, here on the channel. Also, a uh, link to the description below will be the link to this video. Please go show it some support. Hit the like button. He's already a massive channel, but you know what? Massive channels still need love too. So please go support the original video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, let's play at the end. Wee. You don't let me out. I'm going to hire a gang of hitmen to come to your house and kill your family. So me oh. as Homer. The BTS meal McDonald's bag. That has I'm McDonald's hungry. BTS. Shut the fuck up. And eat some BTS, bro. Ordinary things <laughs> as Miller. I'm enthusiastic, but would ultimately dock out the back exit. Rusty Cage as Gerald. Oh, well, hello there. Haven't seen y'all in a while. Welcome to my new home. And many kudos as Burden. Hey. Hey, buddy. You right down there? I can't. Feel sleepy? I reckon oh. I can't. Feel <laughs> your coffee? I'm cold. His, okay, his friends are actually so precious and cute. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Also, make sure to check out my Twitter, Alicia X Life VT as in VTuber. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys stick around the channel. Bye.